Christmas. Hi. That's my little brother. Hey. Hey. Hi, Miss Nelvia. Hi. Hi, Ricky. You're muted. Uh-oh, she's gone. All right, nope, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. We, we can okay, hear you, now. but we can't see you My now. video stopped. Hang oh. on. I, okay, I'm in safe driving mode, that's why. why Hi, I, Evan. Oh, I didn't know. Miss Novak. Hi. <laughs> no, I do that. <laughs> Jill, you're muted. You're muted, Jill. Amy's there. Sarah's there. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, Amy. It's Casper. Oh. You're muted. Oh. Ricky, you're muted. In the left hand corner. There we go. Unmute it. How's that? Yep. Yeah, that's okay. better. Now I think I want to turn it and my son's up, up high. Right. Up high. Get it up high. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Light seems really bright. Is that too dark about it? No, that's good. There we go. <laughs> it's very dark here. Just that storm just came through. Hi, Maya. Hey, Darcy. Hi, Jim. Oh, hi, Tim. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hello, everyone. I was just hey, Ricky. The power went out while we were talking. Are you okay? Me? Darcy. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hi, Amy. Hi, Ricky. Hi, one. How do I turn my camera on? Three. Ricky? Ricky, you're muted again. Okay, there how's you that? Go. All right. Uh, Jill? Yes. I talked with a couple times uh, uh, with uh, Christine Smith, and she's actually working at the polls today. I told her to call me at my office if she wants to speak at the meeting. So okay. you'll, she said she was going to try to get out to see if she could. But you'll be able okay. to you'll be able to see if she gets on. So then you can unmute her. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. I thought that was the case. I just wasn't positive. Hey, Jim. I am Jim. I, I did hear from Christine today and she is unable to make the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We've got a lot to do today and we've got two meetings. So I'd like to start as close to the time as possible. Let's see. We've got one. Where did Ricky go? 
Come here. Three is three. I thought with the red shirt, I couldn't even find you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, one, one more. Yes. Want to be in the video? Jim, while we're waiting, I was just going to make um, a general statement and welcome all the students and families who were able and are able to sign on. Hi to everyone. Um, just so you know, um, as, as you know, having this many people on a call slash conference can be challenging. So um, we, we will have participants, um, visitors included. If you have any questions or comments, I ask that after the meeting, you please either email me or ncsinfo at niagaracharter.org and either myself or Mr. Muffaletto will get back to you. Um, but just to keep background noise and interference to a minimum, we will ask participants to mute or I will have, or I will mute you so we can, um, keep the speakers loud and clear um, and just wanted to welcome everybody again and just and just put that out there. Jim, Judy DiCamillo will not be able to make it today. Oh, all right. Very I didn't even turn back. Showing. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can, so. Yeah. Okay, because last time, last time I couldn't hear you guys. Can you hear us? Yeah, now oh. I can. Oh, good. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Um, Jim, <laughs> are we waiting for Mary? Is that? We really need a quorum today. We've got lots yeah. to do. Yeah, Mary, Mary attempted to get onto the call um, a little bit ago. I had a notice that said I had an attendee waiting, so I thought she was maybe, you know, giving it a trial run. So I don't see her on here unless I'm missing her. Is anybody else? No. I don't see her. Oh, wait, we got somebody else. Oh, I've got two pages. Hang on. Oh, yeah, wait, I do too. Sorry, let's see. Linnea's connecting. Kiki. I'm going to jump on right. my PC. Jonathan. Hey, everyone. Yeah, I don't see. Oh, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan, you're in two them. places. Yeah, I'm going to jump off on one of them now. Okay. Jonathan, did you see the email I sent you just a little bit ago in regards to the annual report? Yeah, you're always sending me work. You're always sending me work. Yeah, Jim, yeah, we'll have to I, have a con we'll have to have a conversation about the items they'd like to have listed on our website now. Yeah, well, I just told Carolyn to look and see, and make sure it was law, because I don't ever remember that. I remember it was suggested. I don't ever remember it becoming law. Interesting, right? Well, let's see where they are. So. Yeah. 
so. Mary, uh, uh, Mary, uh, somebody text Mary to unmute herself. I, I see will. your name. I see your name at the bottom, Darcy. Oh, here. I can unmute her. Mary, I just unmuted her. I'm here. Yay! <laughs> It has the power. We're the meeting to order at 5.05 p.m. And this is, you have your packet before you. This is our regular meeting agenda. Uh, you have two agendas in your packet, ladies and gentlemen. But we're obviously going to do them one at a time. And the case is going to be somewhat problematic. Anyway, um, the proof of public notice was time to set what you have. And we have the agenda as our first item after we call the meeting to order uh, for our May 26th meeting. So, um, I would, if there's no comments uh, on the uh, minutes of the meeting of May 26th, 2020, I'll entertain a motion to approve it as you have it before you. So moved. Mimi? Second. I'll second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All righty, Darcy. Let's get going. You approve the minutes? Yes, we yeah. did. That are, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. You're tuning out. I'm having a little background interference, and sometimes, Jim, you're not coming through on my end. Was the agenda approved too? Storms. The storms will affect it. I assure you. And Jill, Jill, what was your question? The agenda was that approved as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Jill's right next door to me. We're so see. It's not just me. We're both missing. <laughs> oh, you're at, you're at school. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you were on right now. No. All right, we're all set. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get, I'll get started then. Um, okay, so to begin my CAO report, I first wanted to um, recognize the success we had with our first virtual graduations for kindergarten and sixth grade. Um, I wanted to thank the staff who helped to make this event uh, a success um, and really working through um, a challenging time and again, not knowing what to expect or if what we planned would um, work out the way we hoped and planned for. Um, and I think I speak for my entire staff when I say it was very, they were both very successful events. Um, and while it was a different type <laughs> of celebration, we did all that we could to um, acknowledge the the success of, of successes of our students in both kindergarten and sixth grade. And I wanted to thank Amy DiMaggio for coming and being present and representing the board at the kindergarten graduation and to thank Jim uh, Muffletto. Jim, thank you for being there for the sixth grade um, celebration. A, I wouldn't miss it. It was a fabulous event, actually. And uh, in many respects, even better than prior years. Yeah. Um, and and again, uh, we had great participation. Um, as expected, there were a few families who weren't able to join us. Um, we will make sure that everything that was handed out to the participants gets to those homes as well. But I just wanted to make sure to mention that. So job well done to everyone. And um, hopefully we'll be in different circumstances come, come next June. But um, I'm gonna move on to the professional development that I always update the, the trustees with in regards to June um, and some professional development that's taken place from the last time we all gathered together and discussed this. Um, so Teresa Boniface attended reading and writing remotely. Um, actually, I'm going to try not to be redundant and say remotely. This is all remotely done. Um, so I'll just name the staff member and the name of the training. Lisa Boniface attended reading and writing, and that was Gary Wondosi's. Jenna Schratz and Caitlin Smith attended math distance learning, also through Gary Wondosi's. Lynn Casper and Linnea Dufour attended special education distance learning through Gary Wondosi's. Linnea Dufour attended dyslexia, a, a dyslexia workshop that was through the Bureau of Education and Research. Megan Ackerman attended Lesson Structure and Design for Math 
through Greg Tang workshops. Amy Gonzalez and Sherry Tracy attended um, it was, uh, through Erie One BOCES with Elizabeth Kramer. Um, it was a professional development session on instructional reports, and that was through the in the data warehouse. Nicole Kerner from Erie One BOCES held trainings for all Niagara Charter School staff on social emotional learning. And Julie LaRusso from Erie One BOCES held two trainings with grades three through five and one training with grades K through two on implementation of the writing units of school. I wanted to also update the trustees on my last CAO report. I mentioned um, some question was brought up and then we talked about reopening plans. So I just wanted to take a few minutes and just talk to the trustees and participants um, about what we know and what we don't know. Um, we still don't know a lot about the fall and what that will look like uh, for our school and for our students and for our staff. I think, Jill, correct me if I'm wrong, July 13th um, is the new date that we're supposed to have some type of specifics and updated information. Um, but what I can tell you today is that working on Niagara Charter School's reopening plan, um, we have some things that we've already talked about and putting into motion. Uh, for example, the 12 month employees, the cafeteria staff, the office staff, the administrative staff, we are back on site full time, um, resuming normal hours as we would in the summer. Um, for us, for example, we have a screening tool that we have to implement every day before we come into the building, a series of questions that we need to make sure to answer um, that are obviously all COVID related. Um, if you answer yes to any of the questions, you are not able to attend work or come onto the property, you have to contact your supervisor. Um, so we do have a screening tool in place right now for staff. We have um, masks have been purchased. If you were at any of the graduations, you will see that some of the masks that we have have the Niagara Charter School logo on them. Um, so 12 month employees each receive two masks. They are washable so they can be you know, laundered and then every other, uh, all the 10 month employees receive the mask as well. Um, we have ordered samples every staff member received you may have seen these in some of your local stores. Um, some of the New York State clean hand sanitizer spray. Everybody received one of these to carry on their person. Um, and some of the things we're planning for the fall. Uh, families might be familiar or should be familiar with the fact that we've had this crew. We do have a crew here at Niagara Charter School. So school supplies are usually um, sort of merged together. When you get your child's classroom supply list, you buy the supplies, they get to school and then they're kind of put it together so everybody can use them throughout the year. Um, this coming year we are not planning on sharing supplies. Supplies will be kept in separate containers by student um, so that there's there's no sharing of materials. Those will be kept separate for kids. Um, we will we are looking at a screening to screening tool as well for parents. It would be on the back of the communicator. It would be, a, again, it's a series of questions that the parents need to just go through each day to make sure if the students are exhibiting any symptoms of COVID that they are kept home and they're not sent to school. Um, we are not yet certain if masks are going to be mandatory or not, um, but we have been procuring some um, projections on cost for disposable masks for students to provide each student of Niagara Charter School with a mask, um, a disposable mask, one per day. Um, again, whether that will be mandatory or not is, is, is uncertain and we can only follow the state guidelines. I made mention of um, my concern last time with transportation. I am very um, anxious to speak to Niagara Coach Lines and see what their thoughts are on for safety and health plans for transporta transportation of our students um, to Niagara Charter School. And unfortunately, the person that we need to speak to over there did have a death in their family recently. Um, and we have not been able, uh, I have not been able to make contact. Um, but I do have a, an email out and I'm just waiting for, for that to figure out what that'll look like. Um, we are also considering buying first aid kits, one for each classroom versus just having a few in the front office and 
and nurse's office, a first aid kit available in the classroom for minor, um, minor needs would also keep the traffic to the nurse's office below. Um, we are also increasing the purchase of sanitizing wipes, um, hand, hand sanitizer I already mentioned. Um, so those are just a few of the things that will go into our reopening plan. I will tell you that right now we are planning to reopen in the fall. Um, but again, that is, that's a decision that really comes from the state and we can only follow what they, what they send to us. So, but right now we're planning as if we're gonna be back on site. We hope to be, um, and uh, we do have to, there is a guidance document, I don't know if you can see this, there is a document that came out, it's a little over 50 pages long from the New York State Superintendents Association. I was reading through that today. Um, and they make some mention here about the possibility of offering parents options, um, meaning that for some families, sending students on site might not be something that they're comfortable with, and we might have to look at offering an alternative, meaning virtual instruction for families um, as well. So there's a lot unknown, but we are um, following all of the New York State guidelines as they become available. Are there any questions from the trustees? Parents, again, if you have questions, please send them via email, but trustees, are there any questions at this time that I can answer for you, or do my best, I should say, to answer for you? Um, I'd like to make a comment. I like the idea of having the um, first aid kits in each room. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you were talking about the um, mask, how much research have you done in trying to procure those with the thought that we're going to likely be in a mask um, scenario come fall? And I know that in the past we've heard about some difficulties in procuring um, those type supplies. Have you done any, 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 any research thus far as to kind of getting ahead of that? Because you're figuring all the schools are going to be probably looking to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot. I will say that there's uh, definitely an increase in vendors that are um, providing, we, re, we get a lot of emails every day, or at least I do. Um, and actually when Amy and Jill and I were just having a meeting for NWEA testing, um, a vendor just walked through the front door and handed me their <laughs> card. Um, so Staples, Cintas, um, like I said, there are a lot of vendors um, that are looking you know, to, to sell to schools. Um, things such as masks, not just the masks, but the plexiglass dividers, um, the thermal thermometers for the temperature readings. If you, that's not a mandatory, mandatory thing, but if you decide to do the temper, temperature test, um, things like that. I sent a quote to Tim, and I don't remember if it was Cintas or Staples, but right now, I think one of the cheapest prices I've seen for the disposable masks are about 33 cents per mass on um, the course buying in bulk. Um, and I was talking to Tim about some budgetary projections for that because we were sort of doing a rough estimate if you were to give 350 students a mass every day, but do it for like the first quarter of the year, I, you know, not even planning for the whole school year because hopefully you wouldn't have to have a mask for the whole year. Um, even though 43 cents seems like a really small amount, you're looking at about an expenditure of over $20,000 um, just, just in mask alone. Um, and the plexiglass dividers, which I've only just scraped the surface of looking into, um, those are like $200 a piece that I've been seeing. So there's um, a lot of, there, we have to see what's gonna be best for health and safety first and foremost, and then obviously look at cost effectiveness as well. But there's a lot of vendors, Ricky, and I would say that more are becoming available. Okay, good. Yeah, but we don't wanna get behind, like that's why I wanna stay on top of it. And even if we make a small order at first, so we have enough to get us started for the beginning of the year and then grow from there, because I don't want us to get into a situation where there aren't, you know, there isn't any inventory available but we're, we're still looking into what's the best way to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, if there are no more questions in regards to that right now. I'm gonna switch gears. Um, and I'd like to, give me one second, let me just go, go through. Um, Excuse me, Darcy? Yeah. Uh, Lauren was on the call and I don't see her now. Are, are you still there, Lauren? I'm here. 
Oh, okay. Where'd you go? I'm having <laughs> problems with my video. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. No, as long as you're there, I, I couldn't see. And as long as we can hear you, it's great. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I got a little out of order. Before we go to Pride Spotlight and Employee of the Month, which I'll switch over to Jill, I just wanted to, if I could just continue with some of the general updates, if the trustees don't mind. I'm just a little out of order. Um, but I did want to ask if there were any questions about the dashboard and um, yeah, is that under this one or under this one? Yeah, any questions about the dashboard that was provided in your packet at this time? No. I didn't have anything. Okay. No questions. Nope. Thank you. And now I would like to talk about in your board packet, you should have received um, a copy of the EL Education Cooperation Agreement. And I just have a prefacing remark for this. You don't see, I don't believe every year you'll see the EL document um, or agreement because they're already an established uh, partnership with Niagara Charter School. So typically, unless we're change, making a major revision to the charter, um, this agreement is year to year. However, this is a renewal year. So for the renewal application, one of the attachments needs to be our um, memor memorandum of understanding or this cooperation agreement. And I need to show that it was board approved um, moving into, into the next year. Um, so I can tell the trustees that um, in terms of service days, um, the quantity of service, that has stayed the same. Um, to the best that we could keep it. Um, some of the things are going to be offered virtually now, um, but, but um, price-wise, minus maybe a slight um, adjustment from prior, I think last year, Tim, I don't have the number in front of me, but I think last year we might have been at like 35,000 and some change, um, and this year, uh, 36.4. But the contract itself is the same in terms of um, days and services, but I do need the board to um, approve that so I can include it in our renewal application and show we're continuing our partnership with EL Education. Last year's. Yeah, I don't have that budget pulled up in front of me, Jim. Last year's. Uh, 46.5. Last year's was? Yeah. This year, and the budget. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry. EL Ed, this is Tim. Yeah. EL Ed's contract, uh, the approved budget for 2019 20 was, uh, uh, we had in the thing 37.5 or 36.6. Right. I bumped it up to 37.5 for next year okay. just uh, to give you some room. Okay, so, there, so this contract, Tim, is coming in at 36.4. So yeah, so we'll have a little bit. We can amend that later. Mm -hmm. See, savings. The total, the total line item is thirty nine nine. Mm -hmm. um, there's room uh, to the trustees. There's there's room in the proposed budget that we'll be looking at in finance uh, for this amount of money. There, there is enough room for that. Yeah. So basically, if this is what Darcy wants to spend it on, then something we certainly want to take a look at. Um, so you want, should we approve this as part of the finance, Rick, or do you want us to pick it up now? Uh, unmute Ricky, please. He is trying to. Oh, I thought, I thought Jill could do it. No, I can't. I can ask him to unmute, but I think with his thumb, he's trying to. <laughs> No, Ricky, you're still muted. He's saying he's okay with it. Oh, I think oh, he's okay. 
There we go. Oh, there you go. Uh, yep. I, I'm okay with voting on it on it now. I don't have a problem with that. I think we can just get it out of the way. Okay. Um, I would make a motion that um, we approve the cooperation agreement as presented. I'll second it. Second. Okay. Uh, Any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mary, are you, Mary, are you there? I think we lost her. Aye. Oh, there she is. We found her. Okay. Thank you all. Pass unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. And now I'd like to return to our sequence order on the agenda, and I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Kiker, who is going to announce Pride Spotlight and Employee of the Month. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This month's Habit of Scholarship was dedication. I am committed to our Pride values. And the awards for this month go to the following students. From no Ms. Nowicki's crew, August Rodriguez. From Mrs. Burwell's crew, Viviana Thompson, from Ms. Schratz's crew, Jackson James Bradley, from Mrs. Austin's crew, Mackenzie Nelson, from Ms. Smith's crew, Maya Carabello, from Mrs. Boniface's crew, Zoe Coziel, from Mrs. Hopkins' crew, Benjamin Saunders Dibble, from Ms. House's crew, Stefan Long, from Ms. V. Ross' crew, Taina Egger. From Ms. Zaleski's crew, Kayliana Bolden. From Mrs. Chekala's crew, Deshaun Smith Thompson. From Mrs. Ackerman's crew, Storm Groom. From Mrs. Felmet's crew, David Nichols. From Mrs. Gonzalez's crew, Timothy Gray. Nominated by Mrs. Casper, Heaven Merchant. Nominated by Mrs. Dufour, Amari Cunningham. Nominated by Miss Killian for music, Emily Smith. And nominated by Coach Abrams for gym, David <coughs> Nichols. Congratulations to all of our Pride Spotlight winners. I will be mailing your certificates in the mail tomorrow. Congratulations. And for our Employee of the Month awards, we actually have three this month. Um, the nomination came from Mrs. Burwell, and it reads as follows. I would like to nominate the front office staff, Miranda, oh. Megan, and Kiki, for Employee of the Month for all of their hard work since we have been out of school and while we were in school too. They helped to communicate with families, collect and send completed work to teachers, mail materials to students, and they coordinate times for families to drop off work while they're in the building. They have helped to pass out Chromebooks and community outreach, such as the mobile food pantry. They have done so much for our families, including answering questions and even completing Chromebook deliveries to homes. Miranda, Megan, and Kiki are there to answer any questions and have been very helpful during this uncertain time. I am always impressed by the amount of knowledge they have about each family and I appreciate all that they do to keep our school running smoothly. So congratulations to Miranda, Megan, and Kiki in the front office. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, Jim and trustees, um, now that those, the awards have been handed out, my general update is complete, unless, um, Jill, did I forget anything? No. Okay, and if there are, if there are any questions, I'll turn it over to, to Mary for the academic committee. Any other questions of Darcy or Jill? Okay, Mary. Okay, the uh, academic committee report, uh, Dr. Bowen has been meeting with Jill and Darcy and is preparing evaluations uh, for, for them. He's prioritizing Jill so that it is completed before her maternity leave. And the CAO evaluation will present it, be presented at the August meeting, uh, August board meeting. So we should have everything by then. Um, 
on another note, I got a chance to look at the schoology, and I, I think it's very impressive. How's it working as far as teachers are concerned? Uh, the feedback we've received has been very, um, very promising. The last day of classes, uh, that was just Friday, right? June 19th. Um, but we, we received a lot of positive feedback from families um, and it's later on in the agenda, but we'll talk about summer school and we're going to use the same platform um, for families to access summer school courses and review um, through, school, through Schoology. So we found it to be a very user friendly, helpful tool and it's something that we intend to use in the future. Good. The, and the, uh, the Chromebooks have worked out well too? Yes, the Chromebooks, they, they worked out very well um, for families. Again, you know, a little bit of a learning curve with any new technology, but overall the feedback was, was very positive. Um, and we have, for families not participating in summer school, there's a process starting to return the devices. Um, they will be, you know, sanitized and serviced over the summer. Um, and then we'll have them ready and prepared in the event that we're not back um, on site in the fall. They'll be prepared for virtual learning in the fall. And then also for if it should happen with rolling closures that the school closes for periods of time, we'll have those devices ready for families as well. And the front office and cafeteria staff will continue to assist when needed with getting those devices out to families if they're not able to come to NCS and pick them up. Good. Um, you answered most of my questions on next year. I know a lot of it's in the air right now. Yes, and as soon as we have more information, we'll definitely get that out to the trustees and the parents as well. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Lynn? Hi, yes. Um, the Governance Committee met on uh, June 19th, this past Friday, and uh, we received a Google or a a document, an Excel spreadsheet with over a hundred businesses in two zip codes where um, most of our students reside. Um, 14305 and um, 14301 is, was the second area where most of our students reside, but we received 14304. So we received um, this document with over a hundred businesses the um, each member of the governance committee is going to peruse the document and select different businesses that they would like to contact to see about more community involvement with our school and the board. Um, so we're in the beginning stages of this and um, that's where we're at with that. I have a letter here from Christine Smith. She would like to apply for the second parent trustee um, position. I'll read it out loud to you. I have to, excuse me. All right. My name is Christine M. Smith Koziel. I am a parent of two students that attend Niagara Charter School. One child will be in fifth grade and my other child will be in third grade in the 2021 school year. I am also a mother of a child that has graduated from Niagara Charter School in 2016. I am a stay at home mom because I have a disability that restricts me from working a normal job. Therefore, I commit and devote my time to my family and Niagara Charter School. Previously, I have been a security guard at Edison Charter School when they first opened. More recently, I have volunteered my time to help out wherever I can at Niagara Charter School, whether it being sorting books in the library, cutting lamination for teachers, I have enjoyed assisting in all areas necessary. I have a great rapport with the teachers and staff at Niagara Charter School. Additionally, Many students and parents recognize me as a familiar face throughout the building since we make it a priority to attend every school function and participate in school events. I am interested in becoming more than just a familiar face around Niagara Charter School. I would be honored to have a seat on the board as a parent trustee. I consider myself highly qualified for this position 
and very aware of Niagara Charter School's vision and mission. I would love to fill the position representing the parents of Niagara Charter School. Furthermore, I am happy to bring fresh ideas and helpful notions from a parent perspective. In closing, I am willing to spend my time with my family as well as my Niagara Charter School family. I look forward to hearing from you and my acceptance into the Board of Trustees. As I indicated just prior to the meeting, um, I was able to speak uh, with Christine and she's very interested uh, and I will put her name and nomination at our annual meeting. Terrific. Um, Jim, I noticed that there were several emails regarding governance webinars. Do you want to speak to that at all? Yes, I apologize. I should have called you about that. I, uh, I received an uh, inquiry um, from the uh, Charter School Alliance um, that we attended seminars with, and they've been um, they've been following they've been following us along. They they sent us some recommendations uh, for uh, possible candidates, uh, and uh, we talked about that. We have a full slate this year, and. The governance committee has taken it upon themselves to uh, determine if there are local candidates available. But along with that, I said to the uh, board, uh, recommended um, uh, some recommended uh, seminars that they have, uh, webinars that they have coming up. And uh, I thought you should take a look at those if you thought they would be important to your development as a, as a trustee. You're certainly welcome. I found their uh, presentations to be uh, thorough and uh, informative, and uh, I would recommend if you decided you wish to get in on one of those webinars, please do. That's why I said that. Thank you. Hey, okay. hey Jim. There are two. Yes, sir. The, the, the folks that um, they were looking to recommend, were, were they like Niagara Falls um, people? and? Is it something that maybe we should, you know, in, invite them in the meetings to get them acclimated as far as looking a little further down the road as potential candidates? Um, I, uh, I didn't. They were not local, no. Okay. And um, but they were. They're just. They are very involved, in, according to uh, the references, involved in the charter movement and would be interested in being on any board. I. Uh, Thankfully, we were able to tell them that our governance committee was actively soliciting, and we started out with a program um, uh, using our local demographics to locate people who were community based. And yeah. so, we're going to try that first, and then if that doesn't work out well, then people that volunteer and show an interest in the charter school movement. And obviously, we love them to be invited, but I wanted to keep keep it within the governance committee at this point until the board decides otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, do you want to present the other two matters under governance or Darcy? In your packet, you received two um, policies. Policy amendments, yes. Um, we could do them here. Um, Jonathan, you want me to start? Yeah, you have the data policy and the, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, I mean, the gist of the two policies, trustees, that you've received, um, these are requirements from the state. Um, I know the data security one, I believe we put on our website, Jonathan. Do you remember if the COVID one goes on there too? I think it, I think it does. Um, but anyways, the first one, the shorter one, <laughs> you'll see was, uh, conduct privacy and security awareness training. It was under Exhibit A in your board packet under Jonathan's letterhead. Um, this was just an update because again, of everything being in the virtual world, we're just, there's securities now more so in place for the um, data of students. And we had to, uh, what's the word? We had to assign a data security person for our school. So that's me <laughs> um, and, and this policy, um, which we've done training with the staff in the past about security measures and using the internet and using technology um, and 
to the data. So and we do have a policy in place already yeah. for that. Yeah. So. Um, so you see the, the red line version. So this was the existing policy and then Jonathan and Carolyn um, updated it, I guess is the best word, right, Jonathan? Yeah, yep. So there's that policy. And then the second policy was actually reviewed. Oh, go ahead, Jim. One at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, anybody have any questions regarding the red line changes to our privacy and security awareness training? I would entertain here. Yes, sir? None here. No, not here. Okay. I'm here. I knew you were there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I would entertain a motion to accept the uh, policy as amended in the exhibit A before you. So Amy. motion. Amy got a second. And Ricky got a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, Darcy, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, the second policy included in the board packet is titled Coronavirus COVID-19 Health and Safety Policy. Again, another requirement from the State Department. Um, this policy was provided to us uh, first and foremost from ESC, our HR um, consultants. And then Hugh Carlin reviewed it. Um, so. Hugh Carolyn um, is our, is he considered a labor attorney, Jonathan? Yeah. 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 Um, and Hugh also works hand in hand with ESC. So it's a nice partnership. Um, so he um, in, endorsed this policy pretty much as is just um, changing and adding the school name or changing business to school um, where applicable. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty self-explanatory document, um, starting with if you're sick, stay home. So, um, <laughs> This, like I said, pretty pretty easy uh, to read, but just some guidance that came to us from HR and then um, approved by school school legal counsel. And I'd like to have it approved so we can also put this out on our website. I, Jonathan, do you know if it's required on the website? I don't remember. I, I don't think so. I think that I'll just check, but I, okay. I think this is something you got to have just just in, in our manual. policy, and you got to give this to everybody when they come in. And okay. You know, we have it sitting in our lobby now when people come in. So, is sorry, is this something that goes in both the employee and like the family handbooks? Um, ESC. Yeah, I would put them in it. Yeah, I know they said the employee handbook. Um, for sure. I don't. We didn't talk. You know, just because the staff were the ones coming back sooner than the students, yeah. we didn't really have a conversation about the students. I, yeah, I, I mean, some of this, not the whole thing, but some of it, I would would be applied to. Yeah, it would be applicable to, you know, anyone that's mm -hmm. really coming into the building and interfacing. Yeah, I, mean, I would, I would probably add it to um, take our pick of one of the policy manuals, put it in. I think it should go in the employee manual. It could go in one of the policy addendum manuals we have which is where the, you know, the privacy policy is that this is attached to. Um, but we can look, I can look at that in the morning. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? And I will entertain a motion to accept the coronavirus health and safety policy as you have it before you to be updated at all the appropriate Documents, manuals, and procedures. We can make a motion. Amy's got it, and a second. I'll second. Mary's got that. All those in favor? And Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you so much. Moving right along, Ricky. Okay. Um, with, with with the finance committee, and I do apologize. You don't have the report in front of you. Um, and I'm kind of looking, I don't have my printed, I'm looking at it on a little screen here. But what we typically do uh, around this time of year is we take a, a look at our budget and we, we do one final adjustment to the budget to basically take a look at um, through the school year since we end the June 30th and make sure that our final budget is reflective 
of the the school's um, expense and income um, over the course of the year. And looking at this year's budget, um, we are making the adjustments, but um, we still look to finish with a a modest um, surplus to budget. If I'm if I'm seeing this right on my little screen here, of about fifty two um, thousand relative to the adjustments we're making. And, and what we're looking at is the different line items um, and going through them and say, okay, where are we at relative to that? Where we're gonna be at the end of the year and moving monies around um, accordingly. Um, I, I don't have a budget and I don't think you got one in your packets. Um, so it's a little tough, but Jim, and I don't know how you want to handle this. No, we leave it. We email it, to every, we email it to everyone. Everyone should have received a copy yesterday, correct? Okay. Okay. Um, well, why, uh, Tim, you want to go through it in a little more detail? And uh, basically, we're um, our revenues are just slightly more than we anticipated, uh, uh, but our expenditures are down considerably for a number of reasons. A lot, a lot of it having to do with uh, school being closed down and, and not being able to uh, add some teacher positions that uh, were lost during the year. But Tim, can you give us a little better overview than that? Yeah, most of it is because um, there's been um, difficulty in hiring the teacher assistants throughout the year, so that ran up a surplus. That compounds because when you don't have the salaries, you don't have FICA, you don't have TRS, and then you don't have health insurance and dental insurance. So all those things added up to create a surplus that was uh, much higher than expected. Um, that uh, at the end of the year, um, I asked uh, Darcy and Jill and Sherry to um, start purchasing some of the office supply or rather uh, school supplies and materials that they might need for next year and then make the adjustment for this amended budget which we have in front of you. So these line items that reflect the new board were requested that you approve the budget to change the line items to reflect moving uh, moving funds from uh, from lines that have lesser expenditures than we budgeted uh, to uh, increase costs. Like for instance, we need to add a line item for the Chromebooks, and uh, as you'll see that. Um, in the supplies and equipment uh, uh, item 62 and um, in the uh, uh, instructional materials uh, we had a lot more instructional materials we had to acquire and so we moved items out of a budget line items that were uh, not fully utilized um, so I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the actual projected budget and the necessary line item changes uh, to uh, allow for those expenditures. I'll, I'll approve it. Mr. Mary, do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? No. Uh, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very much. Okay, now the new, uh, we're required uh, before the beginning of the new fiscal year, which is next week, uh, to approve uh, a budget for our fiscal year 2020-21. And that was also sent to you last night. Um, uh, you want to get into that a little bit for us, uh, Tim? Sure. And I apologize. The reason you guys got this late is because, as Jim and Ricky and Darcy know, that I had a uh, emergency, and so I've been away from uh, uh, the house, and uh, I haven't been able to uh, catch up. I was able to get some of this stuff out just so that we could approve it. But the budget is based upon uh, current year. And then we'll, the, the big thing is, and Jim and I discuss this, 
I'm sure we're going to have to amend because we don't even know, as Darcy said before, whether kids are coming back to school or they're going to continue to do things virtually. So you'll see in the budget, the, you know, most of the stuff is based upon last year's budget. Uh, I assume the same level of personnel um, with some inflationary uh, increases based upon contract increases. And then um, probably the biggest thing is at the end in the contingency line, um, I put in $50,000 for uh, COVID related expenses. S similar to what Darcy was saying before, there's things we can't even anticipate now. Are we gonna have to put plexiglass up? Are we gonna be buying masks? So we budgeted a line for that to uh, draw down off of that. On the revenue side, going back to the top, we did take a cut from the state. They did lower the basic tuition amounts. Um, so that, that was lowered. We lost about $130,000 there. Um, so that hurt. And then I also budgeted for less uh, students. Now that may change. We normally have, we budget for around 347 or 348. I budgeted for 344, which is our current count. We'll know after they uh, complete enrollment, but you know that's you know a whole different uh, uh, process now with uh, everything still going on with the uh, COVID um, uh, implications. Uh, also, um, of note, just there's a couple of things that net out. We were awarded uh, this year our annual five-year amount from E-Rate for equipment and things, and it amounts to uh, 40, we're at 42915 So if you looked in the revenues, you'll see that amount, but it's offset by an expense that will we'll spend it. So it's a net amount to us of zero. Uh, the money comes from the uh, federal government. We get uh, E-Rate for our internet bill, but every five years we get an allotment for uh, equipment that can be used for um, internet and services of that nature. And Chris uh, Steinoff at uh, um, heads our tech department there, he did a real good job working with our consultant, Melissa Garber, and they got that awarded. And uh, we just got the letter, the final approval last week. So uh, that's budgeted in there. Um, Nothing else, everything else is just routine. I'm sure we're going to be back here amending this budget at some point as we get a better idea. So we'll wait and we'll take a look at things every three, four months as uh, things progress during the year and we know more about what's happening with the um, execution of the school year based upon what we know um, with the coronavirus. Hey, hey Tim. Yeah. Any conversations with the, the, the bus company about um, potential as to, you know, I've, I've heard talk about possibly, um, you know, going to two shifts with, with, with students, depending on the school layout and all, and incorporating any of that, because that could be um, a wild card in this. Have we had any conversations around that and what their thinking might be? Uh, Darcy, do you have any? Um, update on that. Are you there? Darcy is on mute. Oh. Okay. Uh, sorry. Multitasking. Ricky, can you say that one more time? Again, I was muting um, and seeing some background in interference, but. Okay. As, as far as any contingency discussions with our um, busing company around, um, you know, we, we're, we're contracting for, I'm assuming for kind of a typical year and um, where we may need additional busing, or we may need a lot less busing depending on where we're at in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I, like I said, I haven't heard back from coach lines at all. Um, I think um, from a financial standpoint, I don't know, Jim, if we would recommend, I don't know if it's, is it my place to ask them financially speaking what we, I don't know, I haven't reviewed the contract per se to say what we, yeah, I, I looked. Yeah, I looked at these, and it, you know, it's one of those things nobody ever anticipated. What do you do? You know, is there an out for something like this? I didn't see it in the contract. I'll deflect to Jonathan too on that. But it's same thing, like you know, with maintenance. Even though I know the uh, maintenance custodial group is coming in, 
But there's contracts we had set up when nobody ever anticipated that they wouldn't be busing, you know, for the school year. So uh, there's nothing in it that says that we can just cancel the contract for that reason. Is there anything in there that says that they can like charge us access, like if they have to do more runs? Um, or just like, I don't know, Could, like that. Yeah, too. I mean, more runs for them, I mean, it's going to require them to come back to us because Jim, Jim knows buses and everything is down to, you know, the air and the tire, how they calculate how they make money. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things we would have to negotiate because I would also tell them, well, you didn't have to bust our kids for the last four <laughs> months of the year. Um, so I, the, I have two, two, two comments regarding this whole matter. Number one, unfortunately, as Darcy, Darcy mentioned, uh, the, uh, the operating officer uh, had a death in the family and were, it was just within the last week. So it was really, and that's probably why he didn't get back to us. Secondly, uh, if you're going to negotiate, you need something to negotiate with. And I am not aware of any viable option as of today. So um, all the bus companies are going to be in the same boat. And I think we have to wait for this to play out before we can determine um, what our tax will be uh, with respect to our agreement. Well, was it a two or a three year agreement, Jonathan? I, I don't remember that. I think it was three. It was a three year. I remember it being long because I was a little worried about it. Right. Uh, so I'm just off the cuff of my copy. At the time, yeah, yeah, but we wanted to, to secure busing at the time. At the time. Yeah. yeah. I think what happened was that we were actually out of contract for a considerable amount of time. Right. Coach lines on their end was maybe doing an audit or whatever, and they brought it to our attention that we needed to um, have an updated agreement. I, I don't remember if that was a few years, it, it, probably whenever that was, we then signed an agreement for the length of the current charter would be my guess, because we never sign anything mm -hmm. outside of the charter term. So I would guess probably three years was when they brought it to our attention. And so next school year, right, 2021, would maybe be the last year of that contract agreement, I would guess, I, without having anything in front of me. I think it ran yeah. to the end of our chart. Right. Yeah, once we know about the renewal, and then you'll go to negotiation sometime in the spring, which is a renewal. Hey, I don't, It'll be a new era, Jonathan. You know, uh, people will be splitting in, you know, um, for pandemics and things like this to have, you know, people covered. Those were never, I've never seen those in a contract. So it's one of those things that we thought about. Same thing like rent. I and mean, we didn't really use the building, but we have right. to continue to pay rent. Right. Right. Yep. Like I said, my biggest concern about transportation is like the logistical piece of it. You know, we know that our agreement with Coach Lines is second and smaller than the agreement with the Niagara Falls City School District. So we are always going to be second in terms of their priorities. Um, and so my interest with them is definitely to ask if they've had any conversations with the superintendent, if they were talking about doing half day schedules or certain letter days, certain students, if they were considering a staggered start and staggered dismissal, like whatever Niagara Falls plans are, my guess will be we'll have to build our plan off of their plan because we'll be the second priority. Um, so that's my, my biggest concern. And then also just, like I said, other logistics where I've heard things, you know, over the news or on, you know, different documents say like, one child to every bus seat, every other seat. Yeah, that's just a well, point here. I don't know how that would work because just to give the trustees an idea, we run nine buses and on average, a bus has anywhere from 45 to 54 students and we run nine buses already. And that's about two, if not three students per seat. Um, and that's to get all of our kids, 350, almost all are on the bus. Um, that's to get them all here by 8.55 and dismiss at 4, which is already an hour later than the district, 
because they drive district kids first and then they do charter. Um, so if they were to say, we have to break that up, I, I math's not my strong suit. I'll turn it over to my finance guys to run the numbers, but how long would it take to get 350 kids here if you could only have X number of kids, one per seat on a bus? I, they'd be, they'd, by the time they'd get here, it'd be lunchtime. And by the time we had a dismiss to get them home, pretty much all they would have done is eat here. <laughs> so I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. That's my, my be looking at alternate days. Yeah, virtual so. versus on sites. Yeah. Just yeah. as an update, because I hear um, through my wife, I hear Mark Laurie's uh, daily um, updates, and even the schools. And we live next to a Williamsville teacher. The schools don't even know, and all the things you're bringing up are things that are being considered across the state, because one of the biggest fears is not only uh, the fact that you got to uh, address the COVID is the fact that there's a financial implication to it. And all the school districts got cut. They have a financial problem this year going into it. Then to add to that, there's uh, school districts already calling for how would we do this? Who's going to support this? How are we going to run extra buses? So just as the questions you, you're asking, I'm hearing that on a, a state level. And I think it's so big right now, they just don't know what to do. So I think we'll all hear together. Darcy, you'll hear just like the superintendents do once the state decides what they're going to do, which they have to do soon. But I know yeah. from um, uh, Mark Laurie's uh, daily announcements, too, is that they're doing a survey. So they're surveying parents and things like that to gather information. And then they're sending that also to the state. And I think every district's been doing that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. And, and where we're at, that's going to happen this summer. Yeah, and where we're where NCS is at a greater disadvantage is because we're not a neighborhood school in any way, shape, or form. Right? There's there's no child walking here. Um, yeah. So and, and there and there's no transit, you know, bus line. I don't even. I I think the closest one is maybe out past Kmart. Well, I don't know. So again not feasible for for students to walk or families you know to walk and, and be considered a neighborhood school so that might be yep. my only argument back to coach lines about maybe where we should take priority if, over the niagara falls city schools <laughs> because the niagara falls city schools right like they do have the neighborhood thing going for them right so like they could in cases walk more so where we can't at all <laughs> so i know it comes down to the all my dollar and cents and and that's that's going to be a weak argument on my point but i don't know but well, one of the things to consider though darcy is just even in the districts i'll tell you how are they gonna what they're saying is how do they even enact this because the classrooms are so crowded they have like 25 26 kids you're supposed to have social distancing yeah. They can't do it. So they're entertaining ideas about half days. There's a there's state regulations that you only have to have, uh, I think, three and a half hours of education a day. I remember years ago in the Buffalo City School District, they ran half days because of a budget problem. They would they would run a half a day, send the kids home, then bust the other kids in. Everything's on the table right now. No, nobody knows how this is going to shake out because it is so difficult to yeah. figure out and the costs that are going to be associated with it are going to be astronomical. Is Mark Laurie approachable by us? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, he was, yeah, I don't know. He, he was out here years ago. Um, he met with Lynn and oh God, I don't even, it was about special ed. It was like an issue with when students registering and we had a meeting about Tim, I think you still worked for them back then. I think mean, you was, came out. Yes, I was there. Yes. Yeah, you were there. That was it was a long, long time ago. So um I really haven't had any communication with them. Um there, we're about, not even yeah, we're not even a thought. I mean yeah. they to us, you know, they they're fine, you know, the charter school exists. Uh they don't even give us much consideration at this point. They have so many issues on their plate right now with this and with no direction from the state at this point. Correct. I don't know what, what kind of answers you would get. I, yeah. to, just to be in the loop of this, if that was possible, but I don't know whether that would stir up more than it's worth. 
Well, you know, Mary, it might be an option if, um, for whatever, if there's more of a delay in reaching some, if coach lines, if I can't get in touch with someone and if I can't get answers and if they even suggest, hey, you need to coordinate with the district, then we might have, you know, might have to extend out and ask them. That one. Yeah. You know, it'll just, it'll just depend. And, and I'm going to see first what Niagara coach lines knows or they don't know, you know. Maybe maybe we'll be amending the budget, buying a few of their buses, and driving our own. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be bus drivers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I could get up that early in the morning, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the spirited conversation, ladies and gentlemen. But we do have this 2021. Can't hear you. Okay. We do have this 2021 budget before us, notwithstanding all those. And it's a best shot Tim or anybody else will have at this point with the information available. Um, so I think we're going to use a perfunctory. Uh, and we have to adopt a budget, not necessarily the budget. So with that in mind, I'll entertain a motion to adopt this budget. I'll make a motion to approve the, the proposed 2021 budget. Well, I Thank you, Lauren. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, that's it for finance, right, Rick? Yes, sir. Okay, so now um, we are proposing an optional charter school, and the state, in its ultimate wisdom, needs a written document requesting a change in our charter because we want to embellish the education. We need approval to give our children a better education. So Darcy has developed a very thorough document which you have before you, which I used to have before me, and I'm looking for my copy. Darcy, why don't you start talking until I find my copy? Okay, as Jim was saying, yeah, so, um I apologize because this we're kind of just under the wire here. Our goal is to have summer school start virtually, of course, um, June 29th, week. Um, which is next week. And it was probably the day after we sent out correspondence to families offering the opportunity that the state put out a document and said we needed their permission to do so. So I didn't, you don't know what you don't know. And so um, I reached out to hear if summer school really meant for us being that we're not, you know, for like college courses or like the AP or like the high school level classes that you, you know, might need to take summer school in order to get credit. Um, and she given to get back to me and she said to essentially write this letter. There is a guidance document for writing a revision to a charter. I explained to her, it's not necessarily a revision we want moving right. forward. It's just for this year. We have to see how it goes, see what the participation is, collect some data on, you know, whether this was a, a useful, um, venture and, and expenditure for the school. Um, so she, she, under her directive, said to indicate, which I did in the letter, that right now it's just for the summer only. We'll evaluate as we go. Um, and these categories that you see on the document that are bolded and then underlined, that's following the guidance document under uh, other minor changes to a charter. So those are the categories they asked me to comment on, and that's why it's formatted in such a way. And my goal, should it be board approved tonight, is to first, either tonight before I leave or first thing in the morning, then get that over to Sue and David in the charter school office. And then shortly thereafter, I will need the board minutes from Joe and I have to show that it was board approved. But we are starting summer school on June 29th. Uh, <laughs> power of thinking, I love it. <laughs> Any so, I, I, I actually, Jonathan just has a question. I, I mean, we don't get any, there's no income coming from any, right. I don't understand why they get to approve it, but okay, Ans answers, questions answered. I, okay. I don't understand either. I mean, I explained to her that it's it's really, it's it's like review, right? We're just trying to- Exactly, it's about, things. yeah, it's not real summer school. No, and, and I really made it like akin to if we wanted to do an after school review group, we don't ask permission, but this is what I, this is the process I was directed to follow, and so. Okay, yeah, it's fine. I know they'll say yes, but yeah. This comes under the golden rule. The guy yeah. that the golden rules. He who holds the golden rules. Yep. All those in favor. Aye. 
Any uh, other questions? Thank you very much. Oh, I, I, I made the motion. Who seconded? Second. second. Ricky second. Okay, and we all approve. Unanimously Thank approved. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I believe that's it for this agenda. Any other questions or comments, please? Can, yeah, Jim, I want to make one comment based upon what you just brought up. Just a quick comment. Yes. Between, you know, I'm getting, you know, I get a chance to hear from the uh, school district, the Niagara Falls School District, through the uh, superintendent and some other people on a daily basis. Darcy, Jill, her, their, her staff, all the teachers, they have really stepped up in this school. And I'm telling you, the stuff that's being delivered to these kids. Our kids are going to move out way ahead of what's happening in these school districts. They're so confused trying to deal with the complexities of what happened. And the fact that this crew responded, they're nimble, they made the adjustments is a That's real true. credit to them. And I just want to get that on record because it's been phenomenal. And if, you know, I think the state's even confused by, you know, that you're saying you're running summer school. All the stuff is going to push our kids ahead and help them. So kudos to uh, Darcy, Jill, the staff there. Great job. Thank you, Tim. Tim. Good job, I'm guys. Doing that um, and uh, our, our students, uh, were, this will prove how what you just described is in the testing. I'm sure our students will excel even more. Thank you. Now, motion to adjourn. We already did that. We didn't approve it. Okay. All in the favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we're moving on to our annual meeting. Uh, primary purpose um, to um, uh, give a, a summary annual report and elections of uh, directors and officers. Uh, trustees and officers. So uh, uh, you have your agenda before you, which was sent out with proper approval of public notice. Uh, and then motion to approve the annual agenda for uh, uh, June 23rd, 2020, as you have it before you. Make a motion. Amy, I'll second. second. Mary, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Darcy, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Tim, for for what your kind words and just to that transitions nicely into the summary um, from this school year because this year was absolutely unique and something that they don't teach you um, in admin school. Um, leadership in times of crisis is is touched upon, but I'm sure it's going to become um, more of a focal um, component of leadership programs in the future. Um, so. I just wanted to comment on, again, like just as a school as a whole coming together as a crew and really um, supporting one another, where we found ourselves in early March faced with the possibility of a school closure and not, sh and not knowing what the length of time would be. And staff very quickly assembled um, paper, pa paper pencil packets for family uh, families and textbooks and, and, and other books and pencils and anything that they could think of that our families may need to have by their side to, to be, you know, in school at home. Um, and then it was like the next layer was we found out shortly thereafter, you know, we needed to, to kind of go more remote and we had a, so we, we went from paper pencil packets to um, Khan Academy and then, you know, that was a platform for families to, to access lessons and then you know emailing the teachers and our first priority was you know obviously first making sure families had access to food which they did in their local school districts as well as here twice a month through the uh, western new york or feed more western new york um but after that it was just communicating we very quickly i was just saying today i was looking back at the numbers we reached 88 percent of our families within I think the first week of, of school closing. So that was a very impressive percentage to, to make communication with. Moved on from emailing and Khan Academy and some websites here and there to a one day training of Schoology. 
uh, thank you to BOCES for their support with that. Um, and then thank you to the board for the purchase of the Chromebooks. But I guess that would be my best description of this year. It seemed like, you know, we came together as a team and every so often we added another layer. Um, all of our lessons were pre-recorded at one point, then we transitioned to a hybrid of some pre-recorded and some live, live Zoom sessions, even holding guided reading um, with students. Um, so we, I would say as a staff, we really just kind of rolled with it. We kept on rolling and just kept building and considering what we do on site, how could we do that virtually? Um, so we really try to honor classroom traditions. Some of the classrooms did birthday celebrations and, and other, you know, things that were alive inside of the school and how do we keep those alive in the virtual world, not just academically based. The social emotional piece I want to comment on um, and thank, you know, Ms. Young and Ms. Granto for supporting families um, along with the teachers, but I'm saying in addition because um, this is a very trying time for families and will definitely be moving forward into the future, another area that we continue to focus on. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud of our efforts. It was not easy. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's going to get any easier. There's going to be a lot of adjustments and continual learning. Um, but I'm very anxious and almost, I guess you could say, excited for the coming year because we've learned so much. And this isn't learning that's just going to go away. We learned a lot. And we learned a lot about our students. There are so many students who actually have thrived in this type of environment and who, like, being here at school maybe had a real challenge of a time, but virtually they're doing really well and this is just working better for them. So um, I think there's a lot of lessons learned, a lot of good to take away from it. And um, I think if we can be reflective and carry forward with new knowledge, um, it's just going to be to our benefit moving into next school year. So thank you to my staff, my leadership team, uh, to Jill and Sherry, definitely um, for working so collaboratively with me and um, helping to support the decisions I had to make, which weren't always easy ones either, um, and to the trustees and, and NCS parents. Um, and understanding that we, we know it wasn't perfect, but you know we did the best that we could. We continue to always strive to be the best. Um, and, and, and we look forward and hope to see everybody uh, next year and back on site. Once again, our thanks to you for bringing our, our students along and, and with the help of their families and uh, making it a very successful year under uh, the worst of circumstances. So thank you. Uh, and now thank you to our trustees. Uh, our elections are next and the three at large trustee seats that are up uh, this year. Um, briefly, uh, those three trustees have agreed uh, to serve another term. Uh, Ricky Scott, Mary Sheeler, and Judy DiCamillo. Um, so we... Uh, I have a question, Jim. Yes. I have a turnout from the 2018-19 school board trustees with everybody's name on it, addresses, and so on. And on that one, it says my term doesn't expire until 2021. I understand that. I think there was a, a basically a recording error. Okay. Uh, Jonathan? That's yes. Fine. Yes. Jill and I uh, went back to uh, when you first came on in 08, something like that. I don't know. And, yeah, exactly. So there was a recording error as to some when your original term end and when you were reelected and we and i don't know when in 14 or 15 something got messed up so okay. we had it just didn't it just didn't tie out to the correct whatever so that's why we ended up with three at this year but okay. um, as as but we just couldn't let you go so we're going to elect you next year for three more years too <laughs> i think we can wait <laughs> We're going to keep re getting an extra year out of you. So, <laughs> uh, there, uh, and are there any other uh, nominations uh, from the trustees? I would like to put a nomination. <laughs> a nomination. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion uh, to elect the entire slate of trustees for another three more years. 
I'll make them all. Okay, and uh, I'll, second I'll, second. Your, I'll second your nomination. So, therefore, we can't get out of it. All of us in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And congratulations to all. In the same in the same vein, Warren has graciously agreed to serve another uh, year as uh, a parent uh, trustee, and we received uh, this uh, I thought very well uh, thought out letter from uh, Christine Smith. Uh, I had a nice conversation with her. I believe she'll be a worthy um, a worthy candidate. Uh, so I therefore put her name and nomination as well. Uh, are there any other uh, nominations from the floor, as it were? Um, hearing none, then I would entertain a motion to elect uh, the two uh, trustee candidates, uh, Lauren Knowles and Christine smith Cozil, for a one-year term as parent trustees. So motioned. And second from Mary. Any other further discussion or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, and now our uh, next item is election of officers. Once again, I've spoken to all the current officers and they have graciously agreed to serve another term. Um, currently, uh, I'm the president. Amy is vice president, excuse me, Ms. DiMaggio. Mr. Scott is treasurer, and Ms. Sheeler is secretary. Uh, are there any other nominations for any of those offices? Hearing none, once again, I will entertain a motion uh, to elect the slate of officers, uh, James Muffaletto, president, Amy DiMaggio, vice president, Mary Sheeler, secretary, and Ricky Scott, treasurer. I second. Who, who made the motion? I did. I second that oh, motion. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. Second? It was a second. Uh, uh, you can't second. Who's, who's the second? I need a second. Anyway. I second. Okay, thank you, Ricky. Second, okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Anyway. Aye. Thank you very much, ladies and gents, for hanging in there with us. We've got a great school, and it's going to get better. Um, as of the past, I think it's a little bit too early for appointment of committee chairs. I think we all need to speak uh, about what everyone would like to do. Um, I'd like to talk to Long and Christine in particular to find out how they'd like to contribute, and um, I will do that over the next few weeks and we will have the appointment of chairs at our next meeting. Uh, there being nothing else on the agenda, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Amy. So motion. Second, Ricky. All second. Over the Any opposed? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for a, a great double meeting and all of your efforts for all the years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Jill. Yes. Hi. So when do you go out? <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure. It could uh, be as soon as Monday. Yeah, oh boy. Day. <laughs> wow. Are you going to get, get those minutes done for, for me before you go? <laughs> you know it. All right.